Monday, June 24th, 2024, meeting of the Grafton Planning Board. We have, I think, two members uh, there uh, on the web. Justin? Yes, I'm here. Prebu. I'm here. Prebu. I'm here. Okay. Is um, Natalia out there? Present. Well, I can't tell. She's on there, but Natalia, we can barely hear you, so. Couldn't hear I can barely hear you guys, too. Oh, that's better. Okay. okay. She's here. <laughs> uh, that's all we have to do, right? And the other um, Welcome to our new member. Thank you. Uh, public input. If you have something to talk to us about that's in our purview, that's not otherwise on the agenda, uh, this is your chance. Mr. Chair, yeah. just do a full roll call. Yeah, just to complete the roll call. Oh, well, we don't have to do... No, we're oh. both going to call a roll oh. everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, well, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> do whatever you want. You can... Andrea? Uh, present. Davis present. Bob? Yes. And Greg, our so new present. associate. Mm. Okay. Anyway, public input? Don't see anything. That brings us to board reorganization. The first item is chairman. No, we can do this my way or the way the selectmen do it. Uh, I prefer, I've always preferred that we know who all the candidates are and then we vote yes. uh, for it. And I, 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 after that came up at the selectmen's meeting, I thought the reason is then you get to say yes to somebody. You don't have to say <laughs> no to someone, you know? and. So let's start out that way. Who are the candidates for chair? No. Any any suggestions? Well, I can do it, of course. I have an idea how to do it. <laughs> um, I don't know who else. I'm willing. I'm willing to do it, but I will nominate David Robbins. And David Dave is willing to accept that nomination. Yeah. Anybody else? I guess it's... Bob, you're willing to do it, right? You're hmm? also willing to do it. I'm willing to do it, but my name isn't in the basket yet. Oh, well, <laughs> then I'll nominate. Bob All right. For <laughs> All right. Uh, any others? Okay. Uh, uh. Are we just discussing this? Or? Oh, well, we can, sure. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know if that was the next no. step in, uh, in the... We, we make this up as we go along. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we yeah, can yeah. do anything we want until somebody complains. I, I see. Well, I mean, you've been in this role for a while. Is this something that you'd like to consider keeping? Or were you well, looking to... Well, you know, I can. Uh, I, I know how can, to do it. Can, but want to. And we've got a big year coming. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's... Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll see my... My general position is that a board is a board of committee is most healthy when the chair and roles get moved around as the years go by, even if the members don't change overall. Just that it helps with a diverse perspective as far as even how meetings run and things like that. But you know, I know both, all three of myself, Dave and Bob, have been chair at least once since I've been here, some of us more than once, and some of us more than once for the entire time on the board. <laughs> yeah, but, I will say we usually rotate the chairs. You know, so when one person holds it for one year and it moves on to another I person, see. we don't, we haven't always done it that way. There have been times, I think, in the 14 years I've been on the board, I think I served as chair two years in a row once. And uh, a previous board, we had a chair that was served two years in a row once, but mostly we take turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I've had, might be more than once when I served more than one, one year in a row. Yes, but 
does happen. Mm-hmm. Can I say something? Uh, now we have two candidates. Uh, I think both are equally competent, and uh, I like both of them. Uh, I want one of them to withdraw. If neither of them are withdrawing, it, it, it's. I don't think that's. Um, I'm not in a comfortable position, but I will vote. Anybody else? All right. Um, now we'll. Well, I mean, now that we've discussed it a little more, I'll, I'll, I, I'd vote for David since we change it up. That sounds Dave. reasonable. Dave. Dave, Dave, I think will vote for Dave. Dave, <laughs> vote for Dave. No, oh, you, you don't. I don't no. I don't think I vote this um, time, but. Prebo. I'll vote for Dave. And Justin. I'll vote for Dave. Make it unanimous. Well, at least right. other than you, Paul. So, <laughs> so, so will I. <laughs> Your turn. Okay. So I guess that means from this moment forward, I'm chair. Mm-hmm. You want to... <laughs> I, I think I can remember on occasions, I'm not sure about this board, but on some, some bodies, but the uh, the newly elected chair begins serving as chair of the following meeting. But most of the time, I think we've done it this way. So moving on, moving on we uh, I'll open the floor for nominations for vice chair. I'll nominate Bob. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Anyone want to raise their hand and say, I really want to be vice chair? I'd be happy to be vice chair again, but I'm also more than happy to vote for Bob as vice chair. He's not to do a good job, so. So, so far I've heard just one nomination for vice chair and that is for Bob. If there are no other nominations and uh, as a formality, we will vote. Andrea. Andrea votes for Bob. Justin? Are you there? Justin, are you voting for vice chair? Is, I think his video is frozen. Oh, yeah. Yes. Maybe. Prabhu? I'll vote for Bob. Bob? Uh, Justin is back. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I vote for Bob. And does Bob vote for Bob? Sure. <laughs> All righty. Uh, now. <laughs> Next, we uh, open the floor for nominations for clerk. I nominate Look. Justin. <laughs> uh, I will nominate Ms. Bresnahan for, for clerk. Yes. I know past years we have had our newest member on the on the board take on the role of clerk and reading the notices it's because we have staff we don't need to have the clerk write minutes so that's it's not that involved of a, of a role i'm willing to do it but i i've done it for the past two years so i'd, I'd happily hand over the reins okay. i and justin always does this he does this very well uh, i i second that you're seconding prabhu and Andrea. Yeah. Okay, Prabhu is supporting Andrea. Mm -hmm. Are there any other nominations? So we actually have two names in for nominations, so, so there's no further discussion. Uh, put it up to a vote. Andrea? Um, I guess I vote for myself. Andrea votes for Andrea. Justin? I will vote for Andrea. Prabhu? Vote for Andrea too. Bob? Andrea. And Dave votes for Andrea. It is unanimous. Already, and the remainder of the reorganization is to designate planning board representatives to several different committees, starting with uh, Central Mass Regional Planning. We have, I believe, two members that we send to CMRPC. Yes, we send one. The fr our first nomination, our first 
designation is a member of the board um, and then the second one is anyone you know a qualified town person yeah and currently our CMRPC representatives are Bob mm -hmm. and I believe it's me as a staff person Natalia do you know uh, who the second CMRPC rep is I'm sorry what the second CMRPC rep oh gosh I have to look it up hold on I believe it's me wasn't Prabhu one no hold on uh, that was before the last reorg I was before the last reorg might it I, might it have been Jim I my yes. memory is saying it was Jim it's Jim yeah. it was Jim yep okay, it's so, Jim yep so since since Jim is no longer with us mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm guessing that maybe the board would like Bob to continue being the board's representative of CMRPC uh, yes. but uh, one of the other of us ought to step up as well any volunteers any nominations I can do it okay Andrea's volunteering any others uh, I will consider that as a motion for Bob and Andrea from me for CMRPC Second that. It doesn't matter, but yeah, yeah. Um, yep. So just, you'll be interested to know that when I my first planning board meeting, some time back, uh, when they got the clerk, it would have been me, except they said you look like you ought to be on CMRPC instead. And it's all been, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. All right, we have a motion and a second to, for both for both Bob and Andrea. Any further discussion? Hearing none. But just to, so Bob will be the is the delegate and Andrea will be the member. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, confirming. No, we're we're both delegates, but I'm the planning board member. I'm the okay. Got it. Whatever. What, what, however exactly that status is described. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, got it. Yeah. So we'll put this to a vote. Justin? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Bob? Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. Next one is the Planning Board's representative to the Open Space and Recreation Committee. That is currently myself. I'm willing to continue on that. Seeing so moved. <laughs> Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dave votes aye. The next on the list here is a member to the Town Owned Land Committee. That committee no longer exists, so we can skip that one. Mm -hmm. It somehow seems to persist itself on this list, but. Yeah, well, somebody didn't go back in the files and <laughs> after it disappeared and yes, that deleted it from that, what this gets copied from yes, that committee disappeared many many years ago we were we had some thoughts of reviving it but yeah. it didn't happen I'll all right community preservation committee that i believe justin is our, our representative currently yes and i'd happily continue but if someone wants to go on it we can talk it out don't hear anybody else stepping up is there a motion so moved second moved and seconded that Justin continue to represent the board on the CPC uh, call for a vote Justin aye Prabhu aye Andrea aye Bob aye Dave votes aye the Grafton Center Study Committee it's not yes yeah, I, I, I established this <laughs> when I was one of those chairs um, long ago and we um, I've never let it go away um, <laughs> I, I think I'm the only member so we have we have continued to designate over the years Bob as the board's representative to the Grafton Center Study Committee and such as it, it is or may be <laughs> we can always convene the committee and uh, uh, 
flesh it out if we need to talk to people about this yeah. stuff. So we've, um, we've kind of, we've kept it at least breathing, <laughs> if not active. So, assuming, I gather I Bob is... If there was a nomination. Bob, Bob is willing to continue that, so will there, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. second. Nope. Moving and seconded that the board designate Bob as our representative to the Grafton Center Study Committee. Any discussion? Hearing none. Justin? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Bob? Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. We need to designate a member to the Economic Development Commission. As I recall, Prabhu is our current, currently our representative on that. Am I right? right. I, I, I would, I, I'm not able to participate in the meetings. They are generally in person. I have not been able to do a lot of justice. Uh, I would prefer someone else uh, step up and uh, uh, play the active role that might be needed there. So who would like to represent us on the Economic Development Commission? An associate member do any of this or no? We. Uh, uh, we have not typically had that happen in the, that I can remember, but I don't think there's anything that precludes us from nom from putting an associate member in that position. Yeah, I guess the question would be whether the board can designate a person who is not a full member of the board to represent us somewhere else. And I know that's true for a delegate to, uh, to the CMRPC. Um, the associate member from a legal perspective, the associate member is, has a somewhat limited uh, authority to vote and participate, but in, informally the, the associate member is always free to participate in discussions. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't know that we've ever have, had to ask the question. Yes, and I, I frankly, I don't know the answer to that question, but my, my suggestion would be <coughs> I'm sure Greg would do a great job, but just out of an abundance of caution, pick a member of the board that's a full participating member, so we're not having to come back and vote again. Later yeah, on. that's probably the safe thing to do. Yeah, it seems yeah. bad. Robert, do you remember how often the the Economic Development Commission meetings are, and what day of the week? Once a month, and it's generally on a Monday, right before this meeting. Okay. And it's it's usually not a Monday that this board has a meeting. So yeah, they they try to plan it. If it happens, it'll be from six to seven. Okay. Well, six six to seven. I, I mean, I can do it if there's just nobody else. Mm -hmm. I, I just heard Andrea volunteer to be the board's representative. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. Congratulations. I move. We're going to put you to work right away. <laughs> I, I move to authorize the town planner to sign payroll and sign ANR plans. With second. Our, with our uh, approval. That's a second. Yeah. So that started. The, I think um, we didn't. We didn't. It wasn't that formality. It was, it was way back, mm -hmm. um, like, like we've been doing. Right. I moved it. Bob moved it. Is there a second? Justin. Second. All right. Excellent. Moved and seconded that the board authorize the town planner to sign payroll and A and R plans with the board's approval. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. And Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. We have completed our reorganization. Time to, time to move ahead. Our next action item is the acceptance of the Tufts 2023 Annual Stormwater and Parking Report. Uh, the parking uh -huh. report was included in our meeting materials. Uh, I really didn't see anything that I caught my attention as something unusual that we need to worry about yeah. so mr chair for me so this is um the annual parking um certification and storm um parking count demand sorry <laughs> D 
tra uh, traffic demand management and parking and stormwater certification from Tufts. Um, this was submitted. This is submitted every year. Um, I compared this to the um, previous report and double checked the data um, in reference to the other um, Tufts uh, recent applications that we had before us and the parking counts aligned. This also aligns with the requirements of the, of the master plan um, in the opinion of the planning department. Um, I worked with Heidi from Tufts on, uh, um, and helped her through this. I know she is on the call. She's um, available to answer any questions or she wants to add anything additional, but this is standard template um and if you know the board wants to, to talk about anything specific we can do that any questions comments from the board just for for what it's worth the one thing i wrote down in my notes was just an observation that mm -hmm. the uh, the parking demand this year is slightly lower than it was last year. But, uh, the adjusted demand continues to be less than the available supply. They basically report that they've they've never been full up on parking. Right, right, and that's because of the and Heidi, you can jump in. Um, but the staff and uh, that are working from home and the part-time schedules and yeah, the, yeah, the universities yeah. had to to pivot, so it's actually. Kind of working in their favor in terms but, of parking count. But the interesting thing is, it's on the order of 900 and something, right? Yep. And that's with rotating shifts and with mm -hmm. people working remote. Because I think they're, uh, are they bigger than Wyman Gordon now? I would think so. It, it was a long time when Wyman Gordon was the largest employer. I would say so, yes. I don't, I can. I don't know off the top of my head for sure how many employees Wyman Gordon has, but yeah. um, I would think that they're pretty close or surpassing. You know, if you look at their those. parking lot, there aren't 900 cars there anymore. Yeah. Right. No. Um, they well, they've given up a lot, a lot of their uh, parking lot. Well, I'll uh, I'll move that we approve, uh, we accept the report. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Justin. Aye. Prabhu? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Bob? Aye. And Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. Our next agenda item is the matter of the request to withdraw without prejudice the special permit application for 17-27 Upton Street. Um. So, a little <laughs> no. a little confusing. No. I bring us up to date on <laughs> <Yes>. that. Uh, <laughs> I can just make the motion and that'll make it all clear. <laughs> yeah, so just just a little bit of background I think would be helpful. So <laughs> so because this is in the MBTA community's overlay, there's been a little bit of con confusion. You know, we're all, every town in Massachusetts is trying to navigate this correctly. And um, we had originally thought based on the AG's letter and the text within that this application should be a site plan approval only. But after digging deeper, and conferring with council um, a few more times, we the the legal final opinion is that the original application of a special permit and site plan approval is the avenue forward, the legal avenue forward, based on our application to MBTA communities, based on the way our bylaw is written. Um, so this is uh, the final uh, time that we have to deal with this. So this letter is requesting to withdraw the withdrawal without prejudice request. So it's very convoluted. So moved. Yeah. <laughs> Second. Moved and seconded that the board accept the applicant's request to withdraw the request to withdraw the special <laughs> permit application. If that's not as clear as mud, <laughs> any further discussion? Hearing none, Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. We get that little matter off the table. Yes. <laughs> All righty. Next up, we have a request for determination of minor modification at 95 Wesson Street. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. For anybody who had been looking at meeting materials, a, 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 a revised request has come in. So yes. that's what we will be addressing. Yes. 
Good evening. My name is Norman Hill. First, I'd like to welcome Greg and Andrea. I, I am president of land planning. I'm also a licensed civil engineer and a licensed land surveyor. And I'm here tonight on behalf of Holden Farm. Um, there are two con conditions of the special permit that they, they, they're willing to honor it, but they would like some flexibility as to the type of materials used. So the first uh, condition has to do with the handicap accessible surfaces. If you recall, there was a crosswalk and some sidewalk areas that were to be made handicap accessible, and our site plan had labeled it handicap accessible surface. Uh, in the approval document, it's, it calls out a specific plastic grid which my client has priced out to be a cost of about 15000 plus it would be the labor to install it. So what they would rather do is go with stone dust. The stone dust hardens up. It's an adequate surface for handicap accessibility. So they like to do the sidewalk in the areas designated on our plan, the same areas, but instead of do, using the plastic, they'd like to use stone dust. So that's the first request. The second request has to do with a condition that said the corners of the five-acre parcel are to be monumented with survey markers. My client's willing to do that, but out back where he's plowing his fields, he doesn't want us to put steel pins or granite bounds out back, just all the points out front, but out back he'd like us to use stakes. So we're asking, I, I submitted a, a, a drawing that showed which monument would be set where, but each corner would be monumented, but the points out back where it has farm equipment, those would just be wooden stakes. If I put a steel pin out there, our pins are 30 inches long, five inches, in, five eighths of an inch in diameter. It could punch a tire, it could damage his, his plow rig. So he doesn't want those pins out back. He'd like us to just put stakes out back, but all the other points would be permanent markers. I'd just like to add, I spoke with um, Mr. Berger, who's our ADA coordinator in town, and he did not have any concerns about the stone dust path. I also spoke to Graves Engineering just to get a second opinion, and they they just made a point to say, you know, the, the stone dust path isn't a problem, but underneath, just as long as that area is not susceptible to getting, you know, muddy and would compromise, like, the integrity of the path. Um, mm -hmm. Other than that, they didn't have concerns um the stakes uh you know it's up to the board uh i just want to make sure that there's some way that we can the pound the town will be able to know what the area is going forward because it's a four you know it's just a small it's a percentage of the farm and there's we have a you know entire permit conditioned around this one area i'm i'm concerned I, I, you know i don't know what these stakes would look like I'm concerned that they're not going to be there too long. They're 30 inches long. They're one inch by one inch, and they're oak. Um, they should last three to five years as long as he doesn't hit them with a the plow. If he hits them with a the plow, they're well, gone. Do they extend above the ground? Yeah, that would be above the ground about about 26 inches. So you got four inches in the ground? Yeah, four or five inches, yeah. Unless the ground's real soft, then they're going deeper. Yeah, um... Chair, can I can I just ask a question about this? Yeah. Um, so, can you tell me what's the purpose of these stakes? Because I, I know a lot of farmers, and I don't know where they've had to put stakes in. I just where when did this come up? Because so, I didn't hear so it. So it's the about last a fifty meeting. acre site. It's about a fifty okay. acre site. So four point nine acres are designated for this special permit. Okay. And I, I could ask uh, Fiona. I, I think the purpose is just so if you're standing there. And you're directing parking, like park here, park here. You have to park within that 4.9 acres. You can't park beyond it. So you need to know where the boundaries are of that area. Right. So I think I think the purpose is just to designate so people can see where the boundaries are. Right. Exactly. So we yeah we can understand and see where the area is because we don't we want it to stay. It, it's very specifically needs to be in that 4.9 acre area, and we need to have some sort of metric that we can look at going forward and say, okay, this is the area. Um, yeah. Yeah, my Similar uh, to the space. one question that occurred to me as I was reading on the on the first part, you know, but I, I was wondering whether the stone dust was stone dust was acceptable as a surface, and you answered that. It is. It is. And then with the uh, with the markers, uh, I'm assuming that generally speaking, you're not expecting to you know, to plow over or through those areas where the markers are, but it is possible, so that. Oh, oh. 
So that I think, as I understand, the re the the reason for requesting wooden markers is <coughs> is in case you do run over the markers with a tire or through it with a plow, that you don't want to damage the equipment. And so yes, hi Tyler Holman. So if you look on the map there, that whole section that is actually in our plant of corn, we have like three plants of corn there. Uh, I conventionally till it. Uh, we cultivate, we uh, go in and spray. I mean, that is our normal field that we have always, for as long as I can remember, put our first and second plant in the corn. Uh, we have to remember this is a, this is a dual use now where we're, you know, using it for, you know, ag and let's call it, you know, agra entertainment. Um, so I'm just saying in there, 100% it, it, it would affect our ability to grow produce and move forward in a matter like we always have. And the far points on the 4.9 where I'm talking, uh, where the triangles I believe are, yeah. no one would ever park down there. If you look at the elevation there, it's, you know, it's dropping down significantly in a field full of loom. So would never put cars there. So, so those four locations are actually, some or all of them are within the area that you're actively oh, yeah. cultivating. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm going to be picking corn there in three weeks probably. Which kind of calls into question the value of having a marker in the middle of the cornfield. Yeah. yeah, and not, I mean, it's, I don't. And the plowing, this is a seasonal use, just remember. So it's May to... October, I believe we said, um, you're going to be plowing during that time. Yeah. Okay. I work those fields seven days a week. Hmm. I'll just, I'd like to add something, because as I was reading through this tonight, and I didn't understand how this came up after we went through all this, it came before the planning board, this hadn't come up before. I just want to remind all of us from the town meeting that we were at, how many people showed up to support Holden Farms. And this is an elected board of people here. and. You know, when the whole town shows up to support a, a business and, and a farm where they're raising, you know, they're trying to cultivate, they're, they're making their living out there. We, we want to make this process as easy as possible for them and as safe for our community, of course. But, you know, it just seems like there's just one hoop after the next coming to us. And, you know, I, when we did table the last one and made the select board, you know, vote on the hours. But I just... You know, I just want to make sure that we know that the town is behind this farm as we're sitting here making our decisions. That's all I'll say. The problem is, is the next person who comes and asks to not have to put in bounds um, is going to say, you let them do it, um, and we're going to have a, you know, it's important for us to be consistent. We <clears throat> find ourselves in court talking about things the board did 18 years ago. So, you know, no, I understand. We've that. recently seen that. So that's why I'm, I'm looking for a, is there a, uh, is there a, a, a way to sink a marker, you know, that can be would, found with. Would the board take a uh, site visit? And I mean, I'm, I mean, I can show you guys it so you can fully, it's just, it's yeah, not, no, I, I, that, it's not feasible anyway. No, but I'm asking. Maybe an eight foot long two by four? <laughs> four feet into the ground. I'm serious. A pressure feet of two by four, eight feet no. long? See, I'm, till, I'm tilling 18 inches at minimum. Yeah. You know, if, if we have erosion down through that field because we have bad storms, I have to dig a swale to capture the water and put it into it. You know, it's, it's that's our, that's our farmland. We don't have a whole lot of good farmland, seeing how we're, you know, on such an elevation. And uh, I mean, I, what other farms are really going to be coming with this same plan for a special permit is my only, you know, I understand we got to set how we're going to do this and move forward with everyone, but. I have the ability to reset those points at any time. We just go out with our GPS unit and that goes that's, right here. I don't that was. Any surveyor could do that, could reset those points at any any time. Yeah, that was the other part. Of, the other note I had written to myself was, suppose those markers do get 
disappear and they start parking cars down the hill and what about how, us? how hard is it to oh. put them back and, and I just us? heard the answer to that well just so. like when we pull tires and do offsets like for all my irrigation pipelines we want diversion you mean like a 50 foot offset I mean you plow that whole pull off a certain points and then and then you have those points that's how you tell them <coughs> So any land surveyor could go out and reset those points. There are meets and bounds to each point. Yeah. Just take the yeah. plan and yeah, I think could reset yeah. points easily. Well, while, while you know, you know, it's good to have the boundaries clearly marked. I do have a problem with requiring a marker in the middle of uh, in the middle of the cornfield where you're actually you know, you're doing something useful there. And I, yeah. you know, I, I would I would prefer not to force you to try to work around a marker. So we're setting permanent markers. On all, all six points near the road, I like, I mean, they're 200 feet from the road, but those nearest points, or six nearest points to the road are all going to be set with permanent markers. Yeah. Maybe if um, our decision includes requiring uh, some sort of a requirement that should the locations be needed by the town, uh, that they're responsible for marking them. Know, doing what you're saying. Yeah, mm -hmm. Justin's hand is up. Yeah. Justin? Sure. My only question is are the two markers on the northwest side, the two that are closest to parking, designated parking, are those also susceptible to the tilling and and such that yeah. was discussed? Yes, each triangle would represent a potential wooden stake that could be torn out. Each triangle. Yeah, I, my question related to this the fact that there's parking designated right along that section where those two triangles are. That's correct. And so if I just wasn't sure that those would be susceptible to the same issues that the Northeast ones are. So where those triangles are running along in the back corner by the reserve parking, that is yes. actually a big diversion swill from NRCS. Um, so that captures all of our headwater from up top at the farm. Okay. Goes down and puts it into yep. drainage, and so that all has to be maintenance and mowed and upkept to where the USDA and NRCS wants us to, you know, keep it. But it's a recognizable feature. I mean, there's a, a yeah. dip and a, there's a bump in the dip that you can see yeah. running across the hillside. That would stay. That bump in that yeah, dip has to stay for drainage purposes. Right. So, it, so that 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 side is clearly marked with that evidence, but if he has to mow, the stakes will disappear. Okay. I can repeat my suggestion. I think that would <laughs> that would. Uh, I think. Did you vote? Yeah, I I, I, I think I, I like your sure this idea, Bob. That conversation has been going a lot Dave. of places. So just to just to re repeat, if you will, Bob. Um, I was saying manage in the decision that it's a requirement that they locate the points if it becomes necessary they have the response you know we don't have to hire our surveyor uh, you, you you have to when, when when somebody up here says we got to know where those corners are you've got to find them yep. yeah. if, if that works for the rest of the board the the, uh, the request ultimately here is to say whether this whether the board would consider this as a minor modification. Right. I move that That's we, the... Is someone else trying to move that we find these to be minor modifications? Second. Move to second, and the the you know, the uh, uh, well. Mm, I, the minor well we could do it all in, in, in the, and uh, the the proviso I just oh approve the request with the proviso that I just outlined second okay you got enough to work with Fiona mm -hmm. yeah I'll, I'll make sure to include in the, the letter <coughs> what yeah. we just what was yeah the board discussed. the board wants to make sure that the these boundary locations can be easily located if and when necessary. Yeah. So it's we the don't want the responsibility of the, the applicant of the applicant to make the location if it's necessary. 
That worked? Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Justin? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Bob? Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Then we'll take care. Thank you. Get to work, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. We have one more action item, a, another minor modification request. This one is at uh, 5 to 7 Main Street with my good friends Mike and Mark here. Good evening. Congratulations, everybody, on your new positions. <laughs> Mike, it's been a while. Yes, sir. Nice to see you. And he's out of sweatpants, Bob. I want you to yeah, recognize dress dress up. <laughs> dress for the, dress for the occasion. <laughs> so what are we, where are we at with sure. this? What do we have? So the when the uh, applicant was going before the building department um, there we realized that there was a snafu with the parking so the the plans that were originally presented by the engineer prior to mark during our hearing process a called for um, uh, a certain amount of parking spaces but at the time um, the uh, the engineer didn't disclose that there was going to be 1300 square feet of office space in one of the buildings and there was no way we could have read their minds to know that but now that the now that the applicant is secured a new team and is before the um the building department trying to get their building permits um the parking needs to be modified and they need five additional spaces um so they're requesting uh, that the board review the revised plan that was turned in and consider uh a determination consider this to be a determination of minor modification um i checked with the obviously i've been convert uh um, conferring with the building department about this um who did did not have an issue with the location and uh and with the process i also conferred with the fire department who they had a comment but the comment wasn't about didn't really pertain to the new spaces that were added on the revised plan it was the, about the spaces that were already approved by the board um, so I think that that was just uh, an uh, just a, a mishap because I, my mark will speak to this but you overlaid the original the, the, this plan with the underlying plan so it should it should align exactly as it was before so um, let me know if that doesn't make sense but but he yeah but basically the this this those spots that the fire department called out are in the same position as they were originally um so the applicant could speak to this more but the there is a little there is a sense of urgency as they've gotten this far in the process and we're you know just trying to to work with them um at this stage and help them out so so you're adding you're actually what paving a larger area no no yeah. sir let, let me explain um through the chair the um five additional spaces are on a space that is already proposed to be impervious pavement as you can see on the, the plan um, on the on the monitor there, there are spaces 21 through 25 um, the uh, the comment from the the fire department was relative to the the the, five, the 20 spaces that are previously approved by the board and I, I those are unmodified I I used the CAD drawing and left those exactly as they were and, and just for a sanity check, Fiona brought it up to me this afternoon. I went home and I did it the old-fashioned way. I opened up. I actually still have a light table, and I, I turned the light table on and I put them over each other and made sure I didn't have a scaling error or anything, and they are identical. So the the 20 spaces that were previously approved are un, unmodified. So our, our request tonight is just to add five more spaces. For is this basically then just marking them? Striping. Striping. I think that's a minor modification. Yep. I'd even move that. I, th I think I just read a motion. <laughs> yeah, and I might even Sorry. include in my motion uh, to grant it. To grant the request. I'll second that. <laughs> and I, Very good. Moved and seconded. Any discussion of the motion? My Here's only comment is this, these extra five spots look to be in a very awkward position, especially where they're angled away from the entrance. 
Not, never do so. But that said, I don't think it's going to be a... It doesn't affect my vote. It's just a awkward <laughs> note, but that's a factor of the site design. Mm-hmm. You just you're just commenting how the the site design is is limiting. It's it's a little yeah. awkward. Yeah. Um, exactly. And I just want to reiterate. You know, we're in discussion, so I just want to say that this brings the application in compli- into compliance with the bylaw, mm-hmm. which is the most important okay. thing. So. Yeah. Originally, why did you not have any parking beside these buildings? Why was it all put in reality? Toward? I need six parking spaces for both buildings for my staff, and that's it. Just 20, 25 spots. Originally, I was told 20. That's why we kept it away from the front of the building or in the back. In all honesty, my guys are still going to pack in the original spots. It's not bad. <laughs> this is just a on paper thing. I, I, I don't want to yeah. get. That many employees to fill up that many spots because then I vote for the building. This is to satisfy the parking requirements that's of the zoning bylaw. That's bylaws. all it is for paper purposes and, only. Mm-hmm. We're not going to fill that under any circumstances. But it does protect the applicant in the future yeah. for that. In that, it does, now it complies yeah. with the zoning bylaw for for the buildings that are proposed. Yeah. So if right. there, and, if there is an yeah. expansion, the, the spots are available. So there is a motion on the floor. If there's no further discussion, we'll call for a vote. Justin. Aye. Rabu? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Bob? Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. Carry on. It was a pleasure. Fiona will take care of the Thank paperwork you. part of this. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Well, let's see. It is now 749. Do we, should we move quickly through the bills and correspondence? So, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. there's... So not likely to even much. <laughs> we'll come, we'll circle back to a staff report after the sure. hearings. Sure. So we, I think we have some bills. Move that we uh, pay the bills, approve the bills, payment, approve Second. payment of the bills. <laughs> Moved and seconded that we pay our bills. Any discussion? Hearing none. Justin? Aye. Prabhu? Aye. Andrea? Aye. Bob? Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. We don't have any minutes of previous meetings. Was there anything in correspondence that anybody wanted to discuss? Hearing none, as I said, I'll, we'll circle back to staff report after we do the hearings. It mm-hmm. is now 7.30 plus, and we have several public hearings to undertake here. Mm-hmm. Beginning with a new request for special permit and site plan approval at 56 Aspen Avenue. Which um, may I, Mr. Chair, make a recommendation? Um, one of the hearings is submitted a continuance request. Yes, let us let us let us Just take that out of order. Take. <laughs> <coughs> we have a public hearing. It is an item E on our list of hearings. It was going to be the last one we took up. Request for plan approval at Five Millennium Drive. If anyone's here for that, the applicant has submitted a request to continue this hearing to July 8th. So uh, a motion to grant said request would be in order. So moved. Second. Second. Moving a second that the board grant the applicant's written request to continue this hearing to Monday, July 8th. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. And they both aye. Motion carried unanimously. That's out of the way for the moment. Mm -hmm. So let's circle back to our first public hearing. And uh, let's see. Our, Our clerk will read the hearing notice. This is for 56 Aspen Avenue. Pursuant to sections 1.5.7 and 1.3.3 of the Town of Grafton Zoning Bylaws, the Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, June 24, 2024, commencing at 7.30 p.m. in the Conference Room A of the Grafton Memorial Municipal Center, 30 Providence Road, to consider an application for special permit and site plan approval request for an accessory apartment located at 56 Aspen Avenue, shown as Grafton's accessor's map, 
129 lot 72 said property is located at a medium density residential r20 zoning district the applicant owner jessica gillette that's right a copy of the application plan is available for the public inspection at the planning department during regular business hours on or on the town of grafton website at www.grafton-mash.gov on the planning department development project web page All right, Fiona, can you sure. I'll give kick a, this off here? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give a, an overview. So the um, applicant is proposing a, spe a special permit for an accessory apartment. Um, are, the request is to construct 845 square feet specifically in the basement of their um, roughly 2,500 square foot home. Um, the accessory apartment will include... They have a, a, a plan submitted in the package here, but I'll just call out that they will include um, two bedrooms, a combined living room and kitchen, a combined bathroom and laundry area, and a storage area with a utility closet. Um, the, the accessory apartment will be contained within the footprint of the existing home with the primary um, uh, means of ingress and egress being uh, the stairs leading to the uh, top of the home. Um, the first floor of the home. The I when I reviewed this, um, there was a couple of things that I pointed out in my memo um, that I you know would invite the applicant to just confirm. But ultimately, this is a, a relatively low low impact. Just the design of and the location of the um, accessory unit is um, it's not increasing the the building footprint. Um, the folks that will be um, living there, uh, the applicant will have her parents live with her um, and allow them to um, be with their grandchildren so they, they are related per our bylaw. Um, and yeah, I think I just want to uh, confirm if somebody is here on behalf of the applicant um, that access uh, to and from the garage, just the access to and from the garage to the accessory apartment um, and if any other, you know, additional work is proposed um, as part of this that we may be missing, sometimes that, that happens where they go for a building permit and something comes up. So I just want to make sure that we are covered there. Um, but in terms of requirements for you know, parking and compliance with other aspects of the zoning bylaw, nothing was, was flagged. And yeah, and I would also like them to confirm, you know, the location of the internal door between the main home and the accessory apartment, just so it's abundantly clear. Um, sometimes the plans don't always show that. Um, this is the parking plan. Uh, there will be three cars now parked in the garage, or um, in the driveway slash garage. Two, uh, in the, two in the garage. Two in the, in the garage. sorry, yeah, two, two in the two car garage and um, one in the. Uh, in the driveway. Yeah. It appears to me, and I think you know the applicant can confirm this or comment on this, but mm -hmm. it appears to me that although the floor plan makes it look like maybe the garage is connected to the basement, mm -hmm. the picture of the house seems to show that the garage is actually on, actually on the main level. So there is no no possible connection between the garage and the accessory apartment. Yeah, yeah, and I, I yeah, mm. I just wanted to yeah. Make it clear. It's not immediately clear by looking at that plan that that's the case. Yes. Is somebody here on behalf of the applicant? Jessica Gillette yes. seems to be here. Uh, Jessica, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, so there actually is a door off of one of the, uh, th this is actually not a great plan. There's an outside door um, off of one of the bedrooms currently so there's like a sliding door down in the basement right now so okay. there's outdoor access into the apartment the garage is on the first level it's not connected to the basement i'm sorry can you say, can, can you say that again yeah sorry no 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 it's um, okay i just want to make sure I'm, I'm understanding okay so there is a door downstairs in the basement Yep. that goes outside okay and there's two windows down there also for in each bedroom okay so that door exists to exit into the uh exit outside and then obviously the door and um the uh, stairwell heading upstairs 
Yes. Okay. Is this a walkout basement? Uh, uh, sorry, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because I live in this community, uh, I'm just curious. Is this a walkout basement that you are talking about, uh, Jessica? Yes. That's what you mean by the slider. Yes. Yeah, okay. it's not. It's a walkout. Yep. Do the bedrooms have uh, exits other than their doors? With yeah, so there's a window in each bedroom, or there will be. Yeah, there's two windows down there and a door. I think those have to be more than just a small one. There's a safety requirement, I think, for basement uh, bedrooms. I would, I would expect this to be compliant with all appropriate building codes. Yes, probably. That the, the Mr. Mr. Berger will make sure that it's yes, compliant. I, 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 don't, that. <laughs> I don't know specs on the windows, but yeah. So I actually, I got the, um, I just got the building permit approved today. Um, mm -hmm. So I have like an updated drawing than what you guys have. Do you have it on you? <laughs> Are you on your computer? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can put it in the chat. Would that be helpful? Um, I'll, I'll make you... Um, I'll allow you to share your screen. I just think it's important for us to to just fully understand what. Um... Yep. Hold on a second. Oh. I don't want to. We will want to make sure staff gets a copy of that to yeah. have for the records as well, for sure. But the screen share should be good enough for right now. Oops. That's it. be able to get it on viewpoint. Okay, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Can you just make it a little bigger? Yes. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> so this is a window. This is a window. And this is a door. OK, and you'll need egress windows. The building department mm -hmm. brief you on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And this is all in the viewpoint, um, our online viewpoint permitting system. So, okay. So the building department didn't have any other outstanding concerns and looked over this and already yes. gave it the okay. So, and, and just, so what, go ahead, Jenna, sorry. yeah, just, just so it's, it's, clear i th this board knows this but just for folks out there uh, we are this board is responsible for approving the use we don't get into the nitty-gritty with the specifics of the interior that is what the building permit is for um mm -hmm. we are just approving the the use and the ability to have the accessory apartment in in this area um that's the this board's responsibility so i just don't want that to be conflated but justin sorry go ahead and you off so you said one of the residences will be parking in the garage as well. So just to help my own head around it, they'll, they'll park in the garage, they'll exit through the the parking opening of the garage, and then walk around back in, in theory to access the apartment? Well, yes. In, or come yeah. in through the house. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I was just imagining the, the way to access this without entering your living space, in theory, because yeah. it's an accessory apartment. Okay. The residents are her parents. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that that's how it usually is. But there's always the right. So right. I like to so I like to avoid the living spacing <laughs> situation if you can in some cases. So just to understand how that would work. Okay. This this answered my my 
concerns that I flagged in my memo. Um, and just so I'm absolutely 100 percent sure that there's this is the this is the entirety of the scope of work, and there's nothing you know there's no additional increase in the building footprint. No. Okay. There is a public comment about parking on the road. Yeah. Okay. Let me pull that. All right. So, you, Jesse, you can stop sharing your screen now. Okay. Okay. And I will share. Would we, Chairman, and the board members? Um, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Good evening, board Chairman and the board members. I am Vijay Chaudhary. And I live at 53 Aspen Avenue, right opposite 256. And I'm the first owner of the house, staying there for 19 years, so everything is good. But I have submitted the proof that the applicant is saying there will be one extra car. But if you go even now, you will see two big trucks standing on the main road, one of them being a commercial vehicle. And I'm afraid when I'm backing out my car from the driveway, I can hit one of them. So if you add one more car to that, I don't know where the car would be. It, it would be just like a parking place other than a house. And it is affecting like, I'm worried about the snow too, like what will happen that time. Mm -hmm. And I've submitted some proof of the pictures of the cars and the trucks I'm talking about. If you may please review that. Like these are standing most of the time. So when you add one more car to this, you can imagine what will be the plight of the, the neighbors who are staying in that area. So there is a provision through, you know, the zoning enforcement officer would, would need to typically step in here. Um, um, there's a specific uh, regulation in our bylaw about um, garaging uh, commercial vehicles of this nature in a, in a structure off of the road. So yes, that's our request there because yeah. as I told, I've been living for so many years, I have no problem with anyone, but seeing the truck day in, day out, it worries me. And I do feel an impact, it's just out of my heart. So I would request you to kindly consider that and please help to resolve at this speed, like any other car comes to a different story. Yeah. So. So I think it's just, if I may, Mr. Chair, that this, so there's the application that's in front of us that's proposing three cars off of the right of way, which is allowed in compliance with the bylaw, but this is this is a concern being flagged by a member of the public about additional cars at, at this property, um, b b um, trucks rather, at this property that um, will need to be, um, I'll, I'll need to, to work with the zoning enforcement officer on and on that. My other concern is right, I may be not knowing the facts that if you're building another unit downstairs, what is the probability it won't convert to a multi family house rather than a single family home? That's what we have currently in all the houses out there. No, this is uh, this is an accessory apartment. Mm -hmm. It is by the special permit we pr grant for it, assuming we do, will limit its use to family. But what if, like rental, it can be used as a rental unit no. or something, uh, become a multifamily it, house? It, this would not allow it to become a multifamily house. No. Not that there's anything wrong with multifamily no, no, homes, no, no, mind no. you. No, no, that, that is correct. But the thing is, you, the issue is, it's not the unit itself, but the places around that, if you, like I showed you the condition, like if two families and each one has a two or three cars. So yeah, that's that's not an issue here. This 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 is not a permit. Or something like that. I mean, that's what I'm. I don't know the facts, so I'm just. Yeah. For, for, no, this is this in. is this is limited to the use as an accessory, not as a separate, completely separate unit. Yeah. Okay. Um, plus, if you can help me with the stocks, because I don't know where to go. I did contact some of the folks here that did not provide any answers to me, so I thought let me come to the hearing and ask my situation. The condition that we usually put in the decision. Does, does it say that uh, it, should the property be transferred, that this that this mm -hmm. permit permit needs Isn't to be redone? Right. Yes, that's correct. So this only um, the permit is only for them when they're while they're in that house. So when the house sells, 
this permit doesn't go with it okay. and that the buyer if they wanted to use it would have to come in and okay that is do what this you again to do that thing okay. yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and uh, we you know I, i've forgotten the exact term we use but basically family yes uh, so the, i don't mind family staying but i don't want it to be sort of become a yeah that's that's not an issue here yeah. this this, okay. this firm will be limited to this owner and this, this owner's family okay. occupying the accessory apartment. Okay. And about the truck, if you can help me out that way. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. So what is the, so what, like, it has to be some other process I have to go through to work on this truck standing outside all the time? The trucks and stuff, yeah, they take that up with the building inspector, the building mm -hmm. department. Yeah, so uh, like a, a formal, um, you know, you can send an email directly to, to myself and then um, CC Mr. Berger, or I can, um, I'll, I can send him a note saying, you know, this came up at the hearing, and that's the it, it, the complaint needs to be lodged, and then um, the investigation is, is conducted, and then the enforcement is okay is done from there. So, yep. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else? Any other comments, questions from the board? Any other comments, questions from the public, either here in person or on Zoom? Move we close the hearing and direct staff to prepare a draft decision. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. Just one very one very brief thing, Dave. Just I just would like the that floor plan we brought up from the building inspectors thing just to be put in our record because we were concerned about that egress that the windows show. So just to have in our record would be good to have here. Have trouble hearing me, Bob? Or no, I can hear you. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Put it to a vote, Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. This hearing is closed. The draft decision will most likely be prepared for the board to vote on at the next meeting, which would be July eighth. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda, we have a new request for a scenic road permit at 44 Adams Road. Yeah, that will be a yeah. legal notice for it. Oh. Pursuant to Article 24 of the General Bylaws of the Town of Grafton and Scenic Road Regulations, the Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Monday, June 24th at 2024, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. in the conference room A at the Grafton Memorial Municipal Center, 30 Providence Road, Grafton, Mass. To consider an application for a scenic road permit for alterations to the stone wall and tree clearing for a driveway opening located at 44 Adams Road and shown as Grafton Accessors Map 50, Lot 44. Said property is located in a low-density residential R40 zoning district. The applicant owner, Eric Curtis. A copy of the application plan is available for public inspection at the planning department during regular business hours or on the town of Grafton's website at www.grafton.ma.gov on the planning department and development projects webpage. Alrighty. All right. So get this going. Yes. So sorry, bear with me for one second while I pull up my memo. So um Scenic road application for 44 Adams Road, as Andrea just noted, um, pretty standard from what we, we've seen. Um, the, they're requesting a curb cut and 18 inch break in the stone wall along Adams Road to construct a driveway to lead to a, a, a new home. Um, 18 uh, feet is the standard size for driveway applications that we see in town, so no, no concerns were raised there. Um, the applicant is proposing to reuse the removed um, and stockpile stones to fortify the walls on both sides of the potential opening. The applicant is also offering to have a uh, mason repair sections that are in poor condition with um, surplus stones um, that are removed. Uh, no stones will leave the site and the wall will be identical to what currently um, exists in terms of location height with and style uh the applicant will be removing trees but they are on his private property as confirmed when we went out to the 
site. I went out with the tree warden last Thursday to just confirm that everything looked good. He had no issues and did not believe it was necessary to, um, re you know, review the ap uh, application under the shade tree bylaw. You know, not, it's not applicable here. Um, other than that, I don't, you know, I don't have too much. There was a couple of things that I noticed when I pulled up some, you know, I, I just went, I, I provide a summary in my memo, but um, some outstanding um, requirements in terms of the deed and whatnot, but that isn't pertaining to what, what is in front of us. This is just for the scenic road. And so that's all we're really, this board needs to focus on. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions and I don't know if the applicant is here or online, but. Yes, uh, I'm present. So if there, anyone has any questions for the applicant or myself? No, no particular questions. An, an observation of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular lot, some of the history of it related to the town goes back about 24 years. Mm -hmm. The town purchased the Hennessy property uh, under Chapter 61 and set aside some frontage lots to be sold to recoup some, some of the funds that the town spent to purchase the land. This is the last remaining lot of those frontage lots. And one of the reasons that it's taken till now to get this done was that this lot had an affordability restriction on it. Yes. And uh, the town eventually, you know, in, in, in as much as the, 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 the lot was really not marketable with the affordability restriction, the town in July of 2020 removed the affordability restriction, which freed up this lot to actually be sold and developed. Uh, Fiona, your memo did not, note, did not note the removal of the affordability restriction. Is that um, a town meeting action? That was a vote of the select board on July 21st, 2020, recorded in book 63452, page 142, for your information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, yes, it was did not require a town meeting vote to remove that restriction. The restriction was in the subdivision uh, and the special permit for the subdivision. The restriction was in the deed. I don't know that. I don't recall. Oh, I didn't right, look the to deed see. Is the but okay. yeah, it was. Okay, I I will make sure to note yeah, that just, properly. Just just for the record, the affordability restriction yep. is no longer present. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Which is neither here nor there as far as the scenic road permit is concerned. But, yeah. yeah. So it, does this you. represent a sale that the town will be receiving? The town sold this lot oh, to, okay. um, I forget the name. I was I was reading it this afternoon and I forget the name of it, but it doesn't really matter. But the town sold all the lots. The, the owner to whom the town sold the lots was un unable to turn around and sell this lot okay. because of the restriction. Okay. Other than that, it's a straightforward, rather obviously necessary mm -hmm. opening in the stone wall to accommodate a driveway with the stone wall otherwise preserved. And in fact, appear, apparently it's intended to be improved. Yes. Okay. Well, yes. I wonder if anybody has. Is there any other, any other questions, comments from the board? Any questions or comments from the public? This is very straightforward i think the only way this wouldn't be necessary is if the popular mechanics magazine from like 1974 that predicted flying cars would have been accurate <laughs> <laughs> yes. but oh yeah, but yeah, I think. yeah maybe they could have dug a tunnel underneath the stone wall well that's, you know. that's probably impractical though mm. a, a bridge over the stone wall how about that <laughs> all right let's back back anyway. to reality if there is nothing else, the, if there are no other comments or questions, may it perhaps a motion I would move be ordered. We close the hand up. Whoa. Hand up. She's chewing on Public the Public hearing. I just muted it. And uh, <laughs> direct staff to prepare a decision for us. I think we, I think we have to do that, yeah. uh, which includes all of the promises in this, you know, about the, the way the yes. work is to be done. Yep. 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 I second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion of the motion? 
Hearing none. Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. And Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, hopefully the paperwork for this will be before the board for approval in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Alrighty. Barring any unforeseen circumstances that prevent that from happening. Yes, then that's the plan. Yeah. I know. I mean, the office has nothing to do with so it will get right on it tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> no, we're barely, we're really poor than that. <laughs> All righty. Uh, move, moving along then. <laughs> we have another. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Another request for a special permit and site plan approval for an accessory apartment at One Bedford Drive. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Andrea. Ms. Elkins, what's wrong with me? Pursuant to sections 1.5.7 and 1.3.3 of the Town of Grafton Zoning Bylaws, the Planning Board will hold a public meeting on Monday, June 24, 2024, commencing at 7.30 p.m. in the Conference Room A of the Grafton Memorial Municipal Center, 30 Providence Road, to consider an application for a special permit and site plan approval request for an accessory apartment located at 1 Bedford Drive. Shown here on the Grafton Assessor's Map, 36, Lot 11. Said property is located in medium density residential R20 zoning district. The applicant is James Crossman and the owner is Keith Kenneth Bonin. A copy of the application slash plan is available for public inspection at the planning department during regular business hours or on the town of Grafton website at grafton.ma.gov on the planning department developments project webpage. Okay. Good evening, board. How are you doing? Oh. Oh. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'm the applicant, James Crossman. On behalf of the Bowen and family, Kenny, Robin, and Matt, we uh, appreciate your consideration for this permit. So any questions or concerns, we're here to answer. Okay. So okay, just a brief description. Yes, sure. Yep. So um, the applicant's requesting to construct a two-story, 720-square-foot addition in the form of an attached two-car garage with the accessory apartment above. Um, they're also proposing this, just to be clear, the applicant is, is included in the narrative information about the driveway widening from 20 feet to 30 feet. That is not something that this board has any say over. That will be a driveway permit through uh, the and No, I think, and, and that's, I think that's a mistake uh, on the wording. Uh, we're, we're not looking to go 30 feet wide. That, okay. that, that would be depth. That would be off the road that way. We're only looking to go the normal width of a two-car garage driveway. You know, you're going to have two, the buildings, the building, the, the two-car garage, it, it's a normal, it'd be a normal width uh, as a two-car garage driveway. Okay. Um, okay. So, I'll make a. Yeah, I'll, I'll find that in the notes, too. I think that was a maybe backwards thing. Uh, okay. I think the depth is 30 feet off the road. Yeah. Okay, off the road to the front of the house. But width-wise, we would be the same width, we, we would be the same width as the addition. Okay, okay. the addition is 24 feet. The dr the driveway would be twenty feet, slightly the in, 20. two okay. two two feet in from each side. Okay, so but it, you know, in any event, we have no say over that. Yeah. So I just yeah. wanted that to be clear yeah. because that that was part of the description. So um, the accessory apartment that's being proposed will include two bedrooms with closets, a living room, a kitchen, and a combined bathroom and laundry area. Um, there will be an internal door between the two car garage and the main home. Um, I already spoke to the building inspector about this, but the presence of the door um, confirms that, you know, one of our key requirements is that the accessory apartment is substantially contained within the existing building. Um, the two garage doors and the doors of the main home will be the <clears throat> only means of entry and exit. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but that's what I... Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? The two garage doors and the doors... Um, um, of the main home are the only means of entry and exit into the accessory apartment. Right, there'll be the two garage doors, and there'll be a, there'll be a man door on that in the, into the garage as well. Okay. So there'll be two garage doors and a man door, three foot man door located within the to enter the garage door to enter the garage, and then there'll be stairs going up, and and then there will be a deck with stairs in the back. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the and the deck to the stairs in the back is going to go up to the exactly. Right. Yep. So the second egress. Yep. Um, Yep, and then other than that, um, the you know the application uh, is was proposed in, to the board, um, so the applicant can have um, their son live with them, um, and help with all things um, 
around the home and, and otherwise. Uh, so, you know, our bylaw requires that the um, a relative through blood or marriage is a resident, which they are in this case. So, I, I think it's our policy. Yes. yes. Not our bylaw. So the, right, the bylaw doesn't actually have that restriction. Oh, okay. that's been the board's policy over many, many, many years. The definition. But it's it's actually okay. The, the bylaw does not require the re the family occupancy restriction. Oh, okay. So I stand corrected. Yeah. That was small technicality, but it's uh, in any event, it's got to be somebody. You're yeah, smart to keep it within the family, yeah. and that way it doesn't get into rental. Yeah. You 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 heard my little thing. From, uh, oh, absolutely. And, and same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, and other, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't flag anything. The square footage of the accessory apartment specifically uh, is, because I think you have the combined square footage. Uh, it is, um, let me see here. Catch me off my toes on something like that. It's 720 square feet. So that's just the accessory apartment. Yeah, okay. correct. The house is uh, 1,100 square feet. So, um, yeah, it'll be 720 square feet. Okay. Alrighty. That is all I had. If any members of the board have any questions for myself, for the applicant. Just, just a note, and again, this is not particularly relevant to the special permit, but a point of information is that the, the overall building footprint is being enlarged because currently the one-car driveway and the breezeway are being replaced with a two-car driveway, or with a two-car garage, rather. The, the one car garage with a breezeway, the, the the footprint of the new of the new part of the building is going to be drawn a little bit back from the corners of the front and side corner of the garage, but for extending further. The, up. the footprint will be a little bit bigger, but uh, looking from the front, it looks it look the same. Right. But we're not going any wider. Uh, we're we're taking out. It's actually going to be a little smaller because there's a brick facade. It's like 26 feet wide now, and we're replacing it with 24. But we are going back. A little further. So again, yes, the, yeah. the the overall building footprint is changing a bit. Yeah, but that's kind of that's kind of neither here nor there as far as the permit for the accessory apartment is concerned. Correct. It's just an observation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's a straightforward accessory apartment. Correct. Application. Yeah. I think you were saying um, driveway permit. Mm hmm Yeah. Which, where that question will come up, that's. Yeah, yeah, and I, like I said, I don't, I don't think there'll be a problem. The driveway there, I, I, I can. We're not really going that much bigger. It's just uh, the driveway is uh, maybe 18, 16, 18 feet wide now. I mean, we're only looking to go a little bit wider anyway, so it's, it's. I don't think it's a big deal, but I will address it with the. the yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep, yeah. and and just another note that, um, you know, this plan, you'll see that the setbacks. This is a pre-existing non-conforming structure, so that is why that is labeled like that i forgot to it's in my memo but i did not um state that out loud so that, that is why that was anyone was concerned so that's existing right now what you see there yeah well, this this portion yeah and then this is the addition here and you've, so. you've spoken to the um the building department as well correct yeah yeah i'm meeting with them if, if, yeah if the pre-existing Mm -hmm. non-conforming then they have to yeah yep you're, they're you're, next sorry you're you're currently uh you have a hearing coming up with them or you already have on wednesday yeah on wednesday yep. okay yep. so okay. busy week for me <laughs> busy yeah. week for you and we appreciate your time uh running being on the board we know it's valuable time you guys spend to run the community so we appreciate you guys if there's nothing else i had a question dave yes Barbara. Uh, going back to the prior similar discussion about the parking on the on the road, um, I'm assuming there is, I know we don't decide that, but I'm assuming because of this uh, addition, we are not going to see a situation where additional cars are being parked on the road. Um, no, more than that no, so uh, the, 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 the homeowners don't park on the road now and uh, they, they park in the driveway and the driveway is a little tight and it's a one car garage when the driveway is a little narrower than it would be if it was a two car garage so there'll be plenty of parking um once we redesign it and there'd, there'd be no problem yeah, so with with the with the expansion of the driveway there will be space for two cars to park in the garage and easily space for 
two, two, two to four, uh, two driveway. to four in the driveway. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And there's only three adults living there with driver's license right now. Yeah. Uh, but they are looking to expand their family down the road like any normal family would. So that's why we're addressing this to have a parking for four cars, maybe five. But it will all be on their property, nothing in the road. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else from the board? Any motions? Um, well, I'll move that we close the hearing and direct staff to prepare a uh, draft decision for us. <laughs> second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion of the motion? Hearing none. Justin. He's muted. Justin? That is that after the fact. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. And Dave votes aye. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, board. Decision will be drafted. Have a great night. Good luck. Thank you for your time. Good luck. The board, the board will review and approve the decision at our next opportunity. <clears throat> Thank you. And we have one more public hearing. This is a continuation of the request for site special permit and site plan approval at 17 and 27 Upton Street. We ought to grant the uh, continuation at some point for the other one. We did. You did not. Did we? You, you did. did. Okay. I probably had the most. I think course. you did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, it was a good idea. So <laughs> yes, it was a very yes. good idea. <laughs> I'll just give a really quick so, yeah, where are we? over. Where are we up to? <laughs> where are we up to on this? So there was... Um, a few exhibits that were submitted since the last hearing. Um, exhibits 20, where am I? Uh, 23 through 35. Um, just a few. Just a few, yes. So in response to the request from the prior hearing, um, which uh, the applicant did, did a good job in, in, in responding to all of the concerns that were raised at that point in time. Obviously, we have more things to talk about today. But um, I just wanted to reiterate that uh, earlier in this meeting, the request to withdraw the request um, to withdraw without prejudice, that is no longer um, something that we need to concern ourselves with. This is, in fact, a special permit site plan approval, um, and that request was approved by the board um, and is on file with the planning department and is here as well. Um, there is, a, uh, other than that, I have, the, we can go through, and I think I'll just turn it over to Gene at this point, but um, I think that probably the best way to navigate this would be to just kind of go through the key points um, of the sub uh, submittals mm -hmm. and the con kind of outlying concerns. And then obviously we'll we'll need to co coordinate with our peer reviewers for right. the process. So, okay. So hello everyone, it's nice to see you all again. Uh, Jean Christie, Principal Engineer with High and Bond. Um, Joan, if you could pull up site plans, we can jump right into okay. um, some of our changes. Um, so we took feedback from our hearing last time with the planning board. Um, and then a couple meetings with the Conservation Commission, comments from Fiona, comments from Fire Department, peer review for civil and stormwater and traffic, um, and revised all of our drawings. So one of the, 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 the bigger things that came out of, that's perfect, that overall that layout plan would be perfect. Zoom in a little. <clears throat> um, the, the, one of the, the loudest topics from our last hearing here was about the pickleball courts. Um, we've taken them out completely. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the place of where the pickleball courts were, which is in that little section of property um, to the east of the, yeah, exactly right there, we decided to put the, the resident gardens there. So it's a nice, quiet, abutting use to the post office and then the multifamily house just immediately south. Um, this also freed up some space so that we were allowed to move the dog run area over into you know that corner of the property it was really small and against the building previously we've now expanded it um, it's got fencing and it's got shrubbery surrounding it for screening purposes um, the other amenities that are on the site back there did get reworked a little bit there's a couple bocce courts some outdoor seating areas and you know gathering spaces for residents as well as um, some younger playscape type of features that we can have in that location. Um, so that was probably the biggest change, really. Um, the other parts that, that change as a result of some of the civil and site 
stormwater peer review was in regard to some of the grading on site. We did raise the building up a little bit so we can get better drainage away from the building. Um, but generally the stormwater design stayed exactly as it was previously with pervious pavers as our stormwater management feature throughout the parking lots um, within the parking stalls. And then on the west side of the project, we still have the infiltration basin. Um, Another part of this, Fiona, if you could go, I think probably one, two, three sheets ahead. Um, one piece that came out of um, various review sources was, you know, proof of track or truck maneuvering through the site. So we did a couple swept paths for this. Um, you may not be able to see the colors very well, but there's two different fig there's two different vehicles there: fire truck and then um, like a box truck, a uh, moving truck. So the moving truck is. Um, the one that would be able to access kind of the, the maintenance area, which is a loading space inside the building um, to move some of those bigger items when, when folks are moving in or out. Um, fire truck, we have it shown using the grass pavers um, as kind of a, a little extra space to get a fire truck to go around corners and be able to sweep um, hoses around corners. That was something we talked about with the fire department, what feels like eons ago at this point. Um, so in this diagram, we're showing how that works. And if you go way down to the bottom right hand side of the page is where there's another fire truck access similar to the one on the left side um, again grass pavers just to get a little bit more access around the back of the building um, we did some utility updates um, because of you know where we needed fire hydrants for the fire department and things like that from some sanitary sewer updates um, and then kind of the next bigger thing was more landscaping information. So we made, we did create and include in this set a schedule of planting materials and they're, they're, they're specific species. Previously, we hadn't really given that much information yet. Um, <clears throat> but if you want to go down to sheet, I don't know if anybody really wants to see anything, sheets L401 or so. Um, we've also included um, some other at building amenity spaces. Um, I'll go backwards. Sorry. One more. One more. Sorry. Yep. If you can zoom in a little bit at the back of the building. So this, in the first floor of the building, um, kind of right in the middle of the L, there's a, a, a clubhouse space, fitness center. And then off the back of that, we have, um, actually, you can't really see it that great. Maybe go back like two sheets. Sure. <laughs> Three sheets. I'm sorry. Um, you can see better here. Yeah. Um, we had some space there that was right outside the clubhouse that wasn't being used for amenity space. So we took advantage of this um, and we added, you know, a fire pit area. We added, you know, in addition to the grilling stations and the outdoor dining areas that we had previously provided, some more social spaces. Um, so that improved our amenity space offerings for the project. Um, we also advanced our lighting design with some photometrics that's in the end of this, this plan set. Um, we do provide pole mounted lights throughout the parking lot, bollard mounted lights through the, back, the pathway out behind the building and then across the boardwalk. And that's been a topic that we've been discussing with Conservation Commission about lighting of the boardwalk within the wetland area. And so far we're okay. Um, let's see. The only other thing I have on my list to note that I think is a, a difference is that we did add a, a bicycle, you know, we had an interior bicycle storage area, a room. Um, we did add another bike storage outside structure um, on the west side of the building at the corner. And I think those are the big changes other than adding more information. You know, we added quite a bit of landscaping detail on here. Um, you know, some definitely more grading detail than previously. Um, Am I, where is, where is the um, bike infrastructure? Is it okay? It's, an, it's, yeah, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's, it's right, right there. It probably doesn't have it. Oh. The bottom left corner of the building. I don't know what number that is. Uh, I'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I see it right here. Okay, just wanted to make sure. So are there any questions on those updates for the plans before I get into comment on those? 
Dustin. Dustin has his hand up. My only question on the plans, which I saw, I noticed through a letter, not through the, the plans, but the temporary pick up and drop off. Mm -hmm. I remember reading that there was one space added for that right beside the handicap. Yes. My only thoughts are, especially if it's going to be used for like school time pickups or by someone that's not a resident, maybe a family member picks up a kid to bring them to school or something like that or a delivery drop-off for dinner, it might be good to have two closer to the building, even if it means moving one of the residential parking to the to the separate section. This is my initial thoughts on that. I think we I, can... I wouldn't say it's make or break. It's just a thought. No, I understand that. And um, for the board's information, that space is... Um... Fiona, if you could get to sheet maybe 202. Sure. Uh, there is only one space proposed for that loading to unload your groceries, bring them in, come back out and move your car if you needed to. Um, and I think that's because, you know, we have, if, if I didn't want to take out too many of our official parking spaces, I think, if we're willing to give those that loading space up as one of our 180 parking spaces. Um, we're required 179. We provide 180 standard parking spaces, so I say that's our one. And then we have eight compact spaces, so I think we can probably get away with having another one and being comfortable with the number of parking spaces, but that's a, a board discussion, I think. Sure. Any other... Uh... Questions, comments from the board at this point? I have other questions or comments, but not about the plan, so we can move on and then come back to it. Yeah, well, I want to um, circle, circle back with any other you know, questions and comments as we move on sure. through this. Um, so we did respond to a variety of comments. We did, um, Fiona did issue a number of comments, which we responded to. I don't know if you've dove into that as much or if there's anything we needed to talk about of any of them. I did get a chance to review, um, and I plan on, you know, following up okay. on this as well, but, um, there's a couple of things. So our letter we received, you know, I, I requested guidance about the waiver request because the way that our bylaw is written, um, there's not many, there, there's some of the waiver requests can't be honored. So I was, I received a um, confirmation from council, which I uploaded into the record. Um, we don't have to, you know, delve too much into that unless you'd like to, um, but that was just today. So I was, I wasn't able to get it any sooner than that. Um, but there are, but there's a number of considerations there. Okay. Um, there's going to be, yeah, there's, cause I believe that there's 11 waiver requests in total. We have a some, number. <clears throat> yeah. And some of them are, were requested, you know, you didn't need to actually request them. They're not wait. Um, but some of them we will need to, um, the, the plans will need to be changed. Okay. Yeah. So that just came in now. Just, it came in yeah. today, yeah. Late, yeah just, just today, so no one's, no one's had a chance okay. to review I, them. Yeah. Okay. I haven't had a chance to. So we'll have to get those and digest them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And probably have another follow up conversation been, with you. It's been hours since that. <laughs> I, see, I don't think I knew about it until I spoke with Fiona at what, yeah. 5 30 or 6 o'clock. Yeah. It's, it's bad. Yeah. We, you know, we, we're trying to, trying to get what we can as soon as we can, but obviously, council is is busy as well so we're working with what we can do but um yeah so what we can talk about that um you answered my concerns about building height um the turning and, and the confirmation um from graph and fire department was already discussed we will need a revised traffic report based on the comments from bowman which we, yes. You did a you did a peer review response. We did respond um, thirty. 
to MDM. Okay. And I didn't think we were issuing a revised <coughs> response, a, a revised traffic study. Um, I know, I know, our traffic engineer is online. Um, if he has anything to add about the traffic peer review. Okay, I see. Yeah, that. I can, I can jump in. Uh, Matt Stouts from Time Bond. Uh, so I guess overall the traffic comments were pretty minor, um, and so it's pretty typical um, that unless the peer reviewer asks that we wouldn't uh, revise the full study. Mm -hmm. um, as long as they were satisfied with our responses. And we did just get them these response, our response to comments and additional documentation um, what, Thursday last week, mm -hmm. Wednesday last week. So um, I didn't expect them to have anything to add. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Exhibit 32, yeah, it looks like we, we were only able to get that information as of today as well. So it was uploaded once, once we received it. So it's a, a couple of comments in there, um, Matt, Exhibit 32. You had a couple of comments on that. that that's that's our um, MDM transportation. Yeah, I responded to those uh, via email today. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I think that for now, um, Bob is all set to go, but we'll keep coordinating with him okay. as he needs things. Um, the civil stormwater peer review is a little different because we were able to respond to Jeff Walsh's comments prior to our last CONCOM meeting. Um, so he's had them for a while. I expect he'll be able to issue his findings or review of our um, response responses. Pretty short order. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of things that needed, needed addressing. Um, there was some real technical stormwater modeling things. <clears throat> um, which we were able to accommodate without changing the design. Um, and then a number of items such as why we changed some of the, the storms, I mean, some of the sanitary sewer things. Um, lighting was another topic. And then some of the volume, the, the cut fill numbers. So things like that were provided to, to Graves for review. Um, expect that to be coming back. <clears throat> yeah, that'll need a... And then lastly was the fire department. We did receive a number of comments from the fire department. Um, some of them are related more to the architectural side of things, and those are being incorporated into those drawings and designs. Um, <clears throat> but for the, the, for, you know, the civil site stuff, um, we were talking about hydrants, about locations of hydrants and how hydrants are served from the main and things like that. Um, but what the biggest topic was, reg was in regard to a signal. Um, and the fire department was looking for an emergency signal for traffic coming out of the development as well as along Route 140. Um, the challenge with this is Route 140 is a state-owned highway, and we do not meet signal warrants to justify putting a signal at this location. The only one that was applied um, that could be applicable was an eight-hour volume, and there's not enough volume on Route 140 to meet that signal warrant. So at this time, we're not proposing a signal at this location well, I wasn't I, I saw the reference to a signal but I didn't I didn't understand where it would be I think it was so that when the fire department needed to leave mm -hmm. the building that all traffic coming on route 140 and coming across in you know into route 140 from the development would be controlled would be stopped mm -hmm. wouldn't be able to come there's another challenge with this with the um, the railroad tracks being in such close proximity that gets a little dangerous and convoluted in terms of signal design um, so at this time, yeah, no signal for us. Yeah, when the fire department wants to turn left and the gates are down. Right, right. it's already a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so one thing, Fiona, that I realized today is I didn't send an updated plan over to the fire department with these responses. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can do that tomorrow. Okay, and then the last thing, I think that was all the comment letters briefly. Um, the last thing that came up in the last meeting was folks wanted to see some more visual about how what this what this place looks like, right? So we did, our architectural group was able to um, develop a model, a drive-through model, which is pretty neat. Uh, Fiona, it's a huge file. Mm -hmm. I think <laughs> we were able to get it up and running and we should be able to... Oh, it's going to make me numb. So this is, um, and I know that our architectural staff, our folks are on 
um, on the call if they wanted to chime in on anything, but this is driving from town center down eastward on Route 140. Yeah, it's just gonna take a minute to. It, 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 it took a while to download it, that. Yeah, my computer. yeah. yeah. I, once it, I had it, there, I once can I share it. Download. I have it downloaded already. I can share it if you want, Fiona. Uh, okay, that'd be great. Thanks, Justin. Hold on one second. What? Actually, you have sharing capabilities now, or? Not right this second. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it took me quite a while, and then I had to convince my computer that it wanted to play it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I, I was amazed at how good it is you know it really accurately shows the, the 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 existing buildings and whatnot that it shows are um entirely accurate there's a detail there on the common you're missing <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a, an electrical box right? okay <laughs> um we are working to when the board's ready. this this is you know our first but, first cut uh, yeah yeah um but I, I was, I, I'd like to see it without the foliage, you know, in the winter time. Um, and I'd like to see it coming the other way also. That's, that's my personal vision. You know, I come up that way. Um, and I know the common from that direction. Mm -hmm. So both of those, would be much would be interesting like i couldn't see any of the parking up by the railroad where the barn is now um i couldn't see anything really um and foliage i think is probably the mm -hmm. reason i i hadn't realized it was that arch there that's interesting i guess yeah It's just amazing. Yeah, my my comments were just this is a lot. This is a lot more of a presentation than I expected to see, so it was really nice. the The question I had though is that the elevation of this flyby is that consistently at a set elevation above the road level. I think it's it's or, intended, and, and I know John Fisher and others from architecture are on the call. I think it's from a car. Yeah. Okay. Well, from well, at least my my perspective, of course this is not scientific of course, but it seems like this might be like double the height of a car you know, in the air rather than at the actual car height. And I'm using as my reference in part the the archway that we fly through and so, some of the passing cars as it actually goes as well. Okay. We can look at that. Yeah, and you're driving yes, down you're... the wrong side of the road. <laughs> um, or in the middle of the road. <laughs> yeah, so I, what's this I, building I, here? Mm -hmm. This building on the that's left. The that's the multi-family home, family home that exists. Yeah. It's the one on to the just to the east of the post office. Okay. It doesn't look like that. But... Yeah, I'm not sure I could see the post office. And uh, yeah, the post the office there. Road. If you back up. Yeah. yeah. So you've taken out the white building that was the historic building. The barn. The barn. The barn. Yes. The, yeah. Because yeah, that, that was brought up in the last meeting, and mm -hmm. he hadn't mentioned it today, so I didn't okay. know. Yeah. So there's the post yeah. office right there. Yeah. That's that, see it. And that's yeah. the driveway right before it to the auxiliary parking lot. Uh. Yeah. And these sidewalks, who's putting all these sidewalks in all the way down? Uh, Mastio, um, I don't know who's putting in the sidewalks on, well, it's, there's no sidewalks on the side of the the, the railroad tracks. Mass DOT has a sidewalk project ongoing. Mm -hmm. I think it's ready for construction at this point. That's bringing sidewalks to just maybe past or up to the post office. And then we're proposing sidewalks the rest of the way. Will yeah. they be concrete or they'll be asphalt? Concrete, I think. The, um, the state control ends someplace right around the highway barn. Right at the, probably the railroad at, tracks. At where you are, you yeah. know, wh where you are. Um, and then it picks up again at the bottom of the hill so at uh, 122. So you, if you come a little ways this way, you can uh, only have the town and not the, <laughs> not the state. Uh, no, and we're, we have um, a filing with Mass DOT for that work that we are proposing in their right of way. Do you, do you know uh, what year that Upton Street project is actually programmed to be done? Um, maybe Matt can yeah. help me with that. 
Yeah, so I know it was just advertised out to bid in mid-May. Um, it says on the MassDOT site that um, the project is supposed to start this summer. Um, if, if that's still correct, I'm not exactly sure, but it is on the 2024 tip. So the at this point, the sidewalks for MassDOT will be in before the development um, is constructed. Okay. I've been a little unclear the bounds of that uh, project. I should know because I'm on the Transportation Planning Committee of CMRPC and I sit on the Metropolitan Planning and the MPO where we hear about these, but uh, I haven't seen, I don't remember seeing the it, very much about that project. That may, That's probably state money, not federal money paying for it. Correct. That, that's and it, it that, is mostly a mill and overlay job and they're just adding yeah. sidewalks and spot locations. Okay. Uh, so it might fall through the cracks yeah. in some areas. No, uh, uh, we we mostly see the tip money, the, the federal money. Um, and I, I, well, okay, I'm not sure. I don't. Right. Gene, do you have anything else at this point? At this point, no. Okay. Happy to talk about anything you'd like. To well, just one, one little thing. Um, the, whatever we call this, the, um, the, um, whatever, at Grafton Commons, yes. you do realize that that's the common, not commons common up there. Common singular. Hmm? Common singular. Yes. Common. That's what we Noted. call it. Noted. The Grafton Common, the gazebo or bandstand. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. That, that's a gazebo that played a bandstand in uh, MGM's movie uh, of uh, Our Wilderness. No, we, 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 we'll never get over the controversy. No. What do we call that? No, I'm, I'm thinking of a citizen's petition for town meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> All righty. So before I completely lose track of it, I have on the Q&A, I have a comment from or question really from Patty Eppinger at 44th South Street. She was at, had her head raised as an attendee for a while, but for whatever reason, she's no longer in the team. But I'll, we'll put the question out here anyway. As a resident of a perpendicular street, namely South Street, I am extremely concerned about traffic in a very congested area. Most mornings, it is extremely difficult to leave South Street. The report says 857 trips are expected from this complex alone on weekdays. What is the typical traffic between 7 to 9 a.m.? Is that 1%, 10% more? So that that's kind of a, the answer is probably in the, the traffic report. Uh, I'd have to go look it up, but maybe maybe uh, someone has a, a, an answer handy. The traffic between 7 and 9 a.m., and I think uh, the comment is really looking for how much the morning traffic is increased by this right project. during that peak hour uh, yep. Matt, yep. that's something you can address yep so uh in the morning the project is estimated to add about 61 trips um and that's from between uh seven and nine um and then in the afternoon between four and six p.m it's estimated to add 73 trips and then the saturday midday is the third period we look at and that estimate is about 50 trips um, and uh, the comment was correct. The projected daily total um, is 857 trips. Yeah, and, the um, and just to give a sense of, of the project trips versus cars actually on the road, right now there's about 8,000 trips per day on Upton Street. Uh, so it represents a, a pretty small percentage of the trips that will be on the road in the future. Yep, so I think what part of her question was, you know, is there, can you describe the increase, if she's specifically interested in the morning, can you describe the increase as a percentage? I think you said 61 trips, but is that as a percentage of all the 7 to 9 a.m. trips, is that something you you can tell us offhand? Um, I, can, I can look into it quickly uh, and give you a sense. So in the, you have about 500 trips in the uh, westbound direction and about 
the same amount in the eastbound direction. So say a thousand trips during that peak hour. Uh, so still, so 60 trips added to the thousand total, a uh, pretty, pretty small percentage that the site would be adding. Okay. Uh, let me just continue with the last part of Ms. Eppinger's question. Quoting that improved our amenity offerings for the project, unquote, and for the town, is there any thinking about Grafton itself or just this facility for these new residents? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we, we talked about that at the last meeting as well. Um, you know, this is a private residential development allowing the general public onto private property to use the amenities is a liability. Um, and so that's something that I just want to make sure everybody considers. All right, that, that, that takes care of the online Q&A. We have a, a hand in the audience here. If you'd like to uh, come up to the podium or the table, whatever you're more comfortable with and speak. Hi, Jennifer Thomas, 67 Upton Street. I just would like some clarification. If there are 180 parking spots in this complex, 180 parking spots in this complex, how does that only improve, only increase traffic by 60 vehicles a day? I'm not quite understanding how that, how, how that, that works. That's in a time frame, not, all, not a day. I understand during the time frame, but you're saying only 60 people out of 180 parking spots are actually leaving the property from six to nine? Seven to nine. Seven to nine? It just seems unrealistic. It seems like the, the traffic study sounds like a bunch of BS. <laughs> it can be safer. I can respond and say that you know, our traffic yes. study um, was prepared in accordance with our general standard practice for you know this kind of work. Um, it is peer reviewed by another professional that the town engages with on a regular basis. Um, yeah, well, we we need a traffic study though. We we've, we've been talking about what's happening in in that in that center. And Bob has mentioned, you know, we're going to need to do a roundabout. We're going to need the traffic is it's really mm -hmm. extreme through there. So I would invite you to come between seven and nine in the morning when I'm <laughs> leaving for work and trying to run across that intersection without getting killed. Um, I, you know, it does seem unreasonable that it's fifty or sixty. I don't know <laughs> when he did the study, but we do need to consider that because that is the main focus. Mm -hmm. Where it, I think was it Patty. Coming from yeah. South Street through there, coming from North Street, then there's another angle that comes over here, and then coming up Millbury, all cross section. And I think one point is um, that 60 cars yeah. aren't going to the center. They are going different directions. They are right, going they either way. Come through the center. Not all of them. Some of them can go east on Upton Street. They can go up to, yeah. So it's not all 60 are going through the town center, just to correct. Clarify. Correct. Okay. Well, we agree to disagree. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it just be aware. If you aren't that the, the uh, people coming in front of the library from South Street and the other streets around that end of the common, um, they do have a tough situation there, and it's a difficult intersection. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'd like that to I'd like for that to show up as much as it it can in what what we're learning. Yeah. Jennifer Thomas, 67 Upton Street. I just, I, I, I know I haven't uh, been paying attention lately, but when we talked about village mixed use in that area, mm -hmm. this is not what the public, all those public meetings that I've attended over the years, this is not the vision. We talked about as you come into town, what you see and this behemoth, it's, it's not Grafton, and it's just so disappointing that this is what we have. We talked about little storefronts with apartments on top, and now we have a four-story monstrosity. It's, it's, it's awful, and just your eyesight as you drive into the common, you're going to see this humongous thing. It just doesn't fit in with, with our historic district, and it is very disappointing that this is what we got. Parking was supposed to be hidden behind they're supposed to be cute little storefronts. This is not village mixed use. It does not, it does not fit. So, you know, I'm sorry for coming in late to the, to the discussion, but it's, it's, 
really upsetting. And I am a resident on Upton Street, and it will affect my traffic. But more so, I'm concerned about the entire town. And this is just not what Grafton needs. This project is allowed under the bylaws regulations. I just want to make that clear. The zoning bylaw does allow for this. Sure. I mean, it's VMU, right? So it's village. So it can be industrial and it can be residential, Depends. or you can have a mix. Multi but what she was problem. trying to tell us is what what people thought they were getting when they voted on VMU was that. And I think I brought this up in the earlier meeting. We showed the pictures when when I went to the thing that the the, the CRMC PC thing, where we had pictures of village mixed use. What we showed the town was cute shops on the bottom and apartments. That's what we showed everyone. And then we voted on it as a town. So you can see where a resident would come forward and say, hey, that's not village mixed use. That's a big apartment complex that looks like a Hilton hotel. I mean, it's not yeah. what we sold people. That's a, that's a legitimate comment that she's making. Oh, I'm not saying yeah. it's it's not a legitimate comment at all. I'm just saying that the bylaw does allow this. Um, yeah. I just wanted to be clear for the record. Yeah. And well, I mean, yeah, multi -family. We, have follow, we follow the bylaws. That's what, yeah, you're right. We follow the bylaws. It's just I just wanted to be clear. Dan? Dan Kutcher, 79 Keith Hill Road. Uh, there was a mention of the um, historic district. Is this uh, property within the historic district? No. No. Okay. Um, and so uh, I, I also just want to say when, when I voted uh, on the village mixed use uh, overlay, uh, I was aware that this uh, type of uh, development could happen there. Um, I, I wouldn't speak for the whole entire town to say what everybody thought. But uh, that was my understanding. Um, and uh, I, I think this is what Grafton needs. Uh, we need more uh, rental units in town. Um, and I think putting it close to the center is a, a great spot to put it. We want more people coming to the local businesses uh, around the common, uh, going to the library, going to the common. So just wanted to, I guess, make sure that perspective was uh, considered. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Continuing with you know comments and observations from the board, from the public, I do want to before I for, before it slips my mind completely, I want to uh, raise a point here. The proposal is for 30 affordable units out of 122. If the intent was that to reach the 25% threshold, that means all units are counted the sort of toward the subsidized housing inventory. 30 does not do it you would need 31. 30 is less than 25% of 122. And the rules for that basically say that if you divide it by four, mm. you round up any fractional parts. So that the, okay. uh, so that the total is like at least 25%. So if the intent is for all <coughs> units to qualify for SHI, the number of affordable units is gonna have to be 31. Okay. The requirement, the affordability requirement in this zone is right. the affordability less. requirement in it's this 10%, zone. Right. That's what. That's why I put it the way I did. Was okay. that if yeah. the intent was yeah. for yes, all it twenty-two it to is, get on the SHI, intent. thirty-one need to be We uh, we'll make the adjustment to thirty-one. 31. Okay. In fact, I'm surprised that we didn't have that adjustment already, but it has bounced back and forth a little bit because the number of units has bounced back and forth a little bit. As a matter yeah. of fact. Yep, I guess I just wanted it to clarify that. Between two bedroom units and one bedroom units, and that's how we ended up with uh, uh, the number we had ended up with. Yeah. yeah, I just wouldn't want you to be disappointed to find out that, hey, we wanted them all to be on the SHI, but we're one short of them making that happen. No, thank you for that. Well, we'll make, we'll make certain that it gets there. <laughs> i give you that as my promise. We'll make certain it gets there. All righty. Any other questions or comments from the board at this point from... Out of the audience here. Yes, ma'am. Fifteen South Street. So I do come that way, and it is a problem because there's people coming up Church Street, and they I see the backup when they're coming. Is there going to be a light then? They can't put a light. For traffic, because no, that would never happen. 
there, you know, where like where where that crosswalk is. I, I, I can tell you that there about 12 years ago, a traffic study was done around the common and we are now looking at updating that and among the possible uh, improvements that that study considered was one or two traffic signals. So although this project by itself doesn't justify it, doesn't, doesn't meet any warrants for that, it's nevertheless possible that as we, as the town tries to address the, 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 the larger question of traffic around and through the common, we're likely to be uh, to, to come up with some additional proposals that, you know, independent of this project, because we, we recognize there's issues with the traffic around there today, even without this project. And there are problems that we would ultimately like to find a solution for, but it's not easy. Yeah, well, no, I'm one of them. <laughs> my, my, my we, have, we, we have we have a committee. <laughs> we have a committee. What well, maybe I'll because I have this hot idea that I've had for twenty years and no one likes. Yes. Um, make the common a roundabout. All the traffic goes counterclockwise around the common. It makes the flow work. You know, you can flow from from South Street around the corner and down. But also, you have a through lane, you know, the lane goes just through, and everybody flows through. There isn't any competing traffic coming up the hill and around our side to try to turn left at the library. Yeah. That, that's where the trouble is, is that traffic coming, coming across, both, both uh, at, uh, uh, at the old townhouse and at the library, um, if you, I'm the only one that. Well, I, I, there might be one other person, <laughs> but I <laughs> wanna. I have a quick question. Interestingly, the roundabout was one of the six solutions. I know, and it study. didn't get an yeah. adequate uh, consideration in the yeah. <laughs> in the report that I finally saw a month ago. It was done in 12 years yeah. ago. I think our they never had a chance to tell them why they were wrong. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I have a quick question. I, I couldn't sit here silent the whole time. Um, <laughs> did the traffic assessments we have account for backups, meaning the amount of cars that back up and sit, or is it just a, a gauge of volume? Because I know on certain streets during those times of the day, right, even on North Street, there'll be, you know, two tenths of a mile of cars backed up waiting to try to get through, right? So mm -hmm. there might be a certain volume of cars, but because of the traffic pattern at the common, does do these reports look into that like how much of a backup and how much it might increase or i not. think matt can answer that yeah. yeah i can answer that um yeah so as for traffic studies we look at level of service and also queuing as you describe it okay uh and when we're looking at queuing we look at the existing queues or the the length of, of cars that are stacked up and then we add our site traffic in and then we look at the relative increase in those queues um, as a result of the project trips. Um, and we, so we did find, you know, there are long queues out there today, like everyone here is describing, uh, but the relative impact that the site has on those queues is relatively minor. And the, the peer reviewer agreed with that. Okay. Ma'am? Yeah. Shelley Hall, 17 Sartell Road. I'm very interested in knowing the details of the traffic study in question here. I'd like to know how exactly the figures came to be what they were. I'd like to know what equations were used. And I'd like to know uh, also who the peer reviewers were. I just want to know who all is involved and, you know, what, whether it's to be trusted or not. The, uh, all of this in great detail is under the project uh, pages on uh, the town website. Okay, so uh, I apologize that the, I have not, uh, that I'm late to the game also. Well, most people are, but, uh, you know, they don't know. To well, look. until but we get we alarmed. Look, we, we have to look there to see. So uh, my understanding, though, was that the results of that, I mean, weren't we just saying that the, you just, the results only became available a few days ago or something? No, the, the responses to the responses to the, right. you know, they file something, we send it to okay. a consultant, 
he t he comes back with something. You they come back with. Okay, so all of that information is available. Yeah, and yes. and they're on the website in the wrong order. I was terribly confused today. Well, that's because I opened them in the order that they were on the website. Find what you're looking for. Um, and it, I, <laughs> some other day. Well, my apologize. Um, no, my apologies for no, asking no, that's, something that's already known. You, but you, you give us a chance to. Um, let to revisit know. it. Right. Yeah. If if you don't ask, you'll never know, right? Well, true, but <laughs> it, it pays <laughs> you, to do your homework, I, and I did. I, I, I'd set aside a day or two to read through that okay. stuff. It's a lot. Yeah. There, there, there's an enormous amount of detail in the traffic impact okay. assessment. Well, that, well, that will be helpful then. <laughs> so if we have no no more questions at the moment we do obviously have a ways to go before this is all done you're mm -hmm. you're still in the process with conservation and with all the information that just came in over the last three or four days it's going to take some time to digest mm -hmm. all of that <laughs> maybe a bigger one <laughs> yeah i think um you know especially given that peer reviews haven't come back with a clean letter um we definitely request a continuance. Yeah. I mean, among other things, you're going to have to right. digest the, uh, the the question that you know that town count, town council brought back to us this afternoon regarding waivers. Do, do you have a date? Yeah, you, a preferred date for the next hearing. I mean, we're meeting on the eighth and the twenty second. Eighth and twenty second. We well, can. Of July. The eighth is a good start for us. Okay. Well. Um, Shall I? We shall. Hmm? I, shall. <laughs> I, I, I think a written request for a continuation is about to be received. And I move, I will, yep. and I move that uh, we grant the request. Second. Moved and seconded that the board grant the applicant's written request for a continuation of this hearing to Monday, July 8th at 7.30 p.m. Discussion of the motion? Hearing none. Yeah. Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. Dave votes. Motion carried unanimously. You know, Thank got you. Got some homework to do here. Yeah, homework. But, uh, See you in a few weeks. <laughs> we'll, look, we'll look forward to. Uh, thank you. What you can bring back to us on the eighth. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for participating and giving us your feedback and opinions. Well, thank you. It does look. Thank you. It does look we did we did have a hand raised. Oh boy. Uh, oops. I did not see that. Okay, shall we take so the question? The, the, we've got a raised hand from the public. Yeah, we, yeah, we should. Well, well, is it, is it regarding meeting. this? Yeah, well, let's, yeah let's, I, let's, I don't know what it's regarding. Let, let's that's find the, out. That's the thing. Yeah, it, you know, if, uh, Angela? Angela, you just need to unmute. And if, if you have a comment pertaining to the um, hearing that we just continued, we would ask that you, you hold it um, until the, uh, the, the continued date of the 8th of or, July. Or submitted in writing. Or submitted in writing, yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I had my hand raised um, at the beginning of the presentation. Okay. For those of us that are Zooming in, we can't, our box does not appear, so we can't see ourselves on the screen. So I, I did have it up during the entire comment period. I will put it in writing. I just would like noted for the record that my request, I also have concerns regarding the peer review for the traffic study. It seems like it would be most beneficial to have the peer reviewer present at the next meeting to be able to provide a presentation on the peer review. I understand the information is on the website, but it is dated June 19th. It's lengthy. There are many questions. It's not very readily, easily understandable to those who are in the public who don't have a background in necessarily doing traffic studies. So I think to address the questions that you've heard tonight, it would be very beneficial to have the peer reviewer provide a presentation 
for those of us in the in the public that use this way, residents of Grafton, these numbers do not add up with what our real life everyday experience is. Yeah, I, I will work on that, Angela. But yeah, if you could just submit that in in writing, that would be greatly appreciated. You can send an email to to myself or a planning department at grafton-ma.gov and I'll coordinate with the with MDM. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry, I didn't see your hand sooner. Yes. Sorry about that. I didn't see it either. Thanks, Jim. Okay. okay, I believe we are. We have completed all of our public hearings. Yes. And the one thing we have to circle back mm -hmm. to is the staff report. I yes. I will be quick, as I always try to yes. be, but then I end up kind of failing in that way. But um, So just a really high-level overview. Obviously, we've been... Um, busy with applications <laughs> um <laughs> to say the least it's a little crazy in here um and it's only two two of us so we are we're doing the best we can um i did get confirmation that we got the municipal fiber grant for twenty seven thousand. so that was okay, that's, pretty exciting that, that's for the, the first Wi-Fi half of uh, or you still need the other you still need money um we I won't say no just yet, but we definitely won't need to approach the you know cable oversight committee okay. with uh, uh, any. Yeah, we we tried uh, to we tried to not take any of that money, and okay. we were able to fund half the project through the grant. Which is cool. a, a lot's been going on in the cable committee lately, so. Yes. No. I, I I know. I know. So so that that was that was really nice that the um that we were able to get that. It was a huge relief, and we'll be able to pursue that project in earnest. Um, Great. And we went, we've been meeting with Ty and Bond about Fisherville Dam. Um, so, Greg, uh, just for your um, knowledge, so we, uh, Fisherville Dam is a high hazard dam um, in South Grafton. We are partnering with the property owner to um, uh, evaluate the dam. It's a phase, the, uh, update the phase one report, it's called, mm -hmm. and do the um, per, uh, permitting and design uh, for phase two. And what's called chapter 263 documents. So we were we issued an RP, tie-in bond was the respondent and the lowest bid. We were moving forward with them. We've had a couple of progress meetings and they've been flying. They're either going out and they've done wetland, wetland replication and flags. Um, they're getting their, they're coordinating with the diving team to go out there. They're, they're, they're really doing a great job and I'm happy to um, talk about that. I, I will try my best. <laughs> So it's very um, niche uh, what what's going on right now, but um, that project is moving along, and we're really happy with the progress. And it's on track for completion by. I've next never year. seen a drawing of exactly what uh, what is being what has needs. Mm -hmm. There's, I, I think I always get this wrong. I think the dam includes all of the earth keeps the water in and where the water comes over is really a spillway yeah they're they're studying the entire area okay so so area. but the, okay so it's both both the earth and the yes spillway. yes okay. that's my understanding yes so it's yep fairly good sized yes no it's quite it's it's quite a, a quite quite a, a really interesting piece of infrastructure so i've, I've gotten to mm know it very well and it's very cool so we're, we're happy with the progress of tie and bond and we have monthly meetings um that i can re you know report back on and i'll continue to do that it, it'll be great um when they get it so that they can close the gates and yeah let the pond be refilled after how long since the fire early 80s Really, it was my recollection, and this actually before my time living here. But from what I've seen, you know, the the problems sort of began in the, like 1982 or thereabouts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that predates the fire for sure. Um, we have <coughs> posted for an assistant planner that's out 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 on the street, and we're very excited to be getting. <laughs> potentially somebody else in the office for certain values of we yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i am <laughs> very excited to have another um hopefully you know person uh 
on board to help with with all of the work that we have going on. It's a very exciting time to be a planner in Grafton, but it is definitely quite busy and we, we need the help. So that is posted. That's been posted to um, the TA's office, posted that through all their typical outlets. I've circulated it on um, the Mass Planners Listserv and I've also posted it with APA, American Planning Association, Massachusetts webpage. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm i happy to answer any specific questions. I have a bunch, you know, I have things that I can kind of run through, but if there's any particular projects that anyone on the board wants wants to talk about, we have, um, uh, we just closed our wayfinding grant survey um, today, and we'll be going over those results with the consultant tomorrow. Um, and, you know, I, I'll, I'll make those results available and put that, put that on the MDI uh, wayfinding page, but, um, that project is going to be wrapping up relatively soon. Um, we had this is our second survey, um, and we also had a community forum um, a few months ago, which which I thought was was nice. Andrea went, Dave went, which was great. Um, so yeah, so that's that's where that's the most it's coming to the top of my head. But there is a lot going on. Oh, one other thing is we do as part of the hazard mitigation plan, we're required to have a public meeting once a year with members of the hazard mitigation committee um i it, it's it's uh staff members predominantly and it's dave <laughs> so we uh are slated to meet on the 17th of july to go over where we are at with implementing that plan um and also we'll be able to solicit uh, well we have a um the agenda is posted we'll post the meeting materials and the plan is available on our page for uh, members of the public to review and comment on and we'll take all those public comments and incorporate that feedback um so yeah i highly encourage folks in town to um attend that meeting or provide any feedback and you know in writing or you can call the planning department um yeah i i passed on and you probably saw i passed on that in my social media there was a good bit of People that didn't necessarily see this, uh, you know, we have twenty five thousand dollars and we got this this yep, sign. The wayfinding and brand, um, and, brand, and, yeah. and wayfinding to me is not the name of the place. It's the how to get to the place, mm -hmm. and then you can have the name of the place. So it, it's just I think a lot of people don't know what's going to happen or you know mm -hmm. where this is going and yeah uh, so just for um confirmation yeah thanks for bringing that up bob so it'll be a, a mix of directional signage as well as kind of more like marketing based signage um that's you that's what's in the what's called the the element hierarchy in the signage world um so it'll be specs will be produced to address both of those um aspects so that's that's the um, so and that'll be in the final report. So it's not just the it's not sign that you had illustrated, right? It but but that will be the basis that you know the directional signage is is pretty. It's it's more straightforward because there's no kind of aesthetic elements really to those. It's just we'll see. It would be really nice to get some result. I don't know who you're sharing the results to all these surveys because there was <laughs> one during the last. Um, year during the um, Wednesday meetings where we had the tent, everybody put in all these comments, and mm -hmm. there was another one with the other group that everybody did these surveys, and then this survey, and I, I mean, some of the, even the wording in this one on the wayfinding survey was like a, a proud place or something. I was like, mm -hmm. who put place that, of, a, a place of pride. I was like, where, pride where, of place. where, where did mm -hmm. that come well, from? Would, like, I'd like to see the survey results from all these surveys to kind of get an idea of what, because yeah. I mean, we're here to serve the people, and I'm like, shouldn't just be my opinion or, well, or one person's let's figure out what eventually i think the i passed on the push to um, allow people taking the survey to have comments i don't know whether it got out there in time to get any comments i don't even know whether it, it got incorporated mm -hmm. the, the, yes uh, yes i i i saw those comments and i forwarded them and made sure to um kind of sum summarize you know the key points and, and send it to the consultant um yeah that was the consultant's um suggestion based on the feedback thus far but i i did relay 
to him that that is not uh, a, a something that the people have been interested in at all and yeah I mean, in favor of so yeah based based on the uh the feedback we got from the previous from the previous survey and from that uh, workshop of sorts mm -hmm. that did we, we all the you know what was one word you would use to describe drafting two words so we, we we the hope was that out of that we would get a good sense of a a, a catchphrase or a slogan that really said this is Grafton, mm -hmm. and we didn't really get anything mm -hmm. at, at, at the last time we discussed this. We really, there, there nothing emerged from that that really, mm -hmm. really stood stood out as a good. Yeah. So pride of place ended up being sort of a well, for lack of a better thing, we'll we'll, we'll use that as kind of a placeholder, but. And yeah, but I'd just like to say, look at what happened though when Holden Farms needed something. How many people showed up, and look how much mu how much food we raise at the community harvest barn. And we feed thousands of people in the state with that food, and we're just I think we're a very giving community. We're, it's not just a place of pride. We just like yeah. really mm -hmm. care about one another, and yeah, so it's just a little reason. odd, you know. It's a little, a little odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, that, that struck a lot of people as being. <laughs> yeah kind of quirky or pride yeah prideful people here <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think I think the committee the advisory committee during our, 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 our weekly or our monthly rather meetings said okay <laughs> that wasn't really what we were going for but you know if we did we'll we, we'll get the feedback right, on it and right. we'll, we didn't we're like not. proud we didn't about what up, some nothing yeah, nothing about, nothing right. came out and said this is what we all think. Yeah, this. Yeah, is great. and there's some other connotations to pride right now in the, out in the world, and we just have to be a little careful. Yeah. Yeah. I won't mention it. But yeah. Not that. I mean, just proud boys. Not, <laughs> not pride parade. Nothing yeah, like no, that. No, gotcha. I'm not trying yeah. to say yeah. anything bad. Yeah. I'm just saying there are some other things that we just want to make sure we're not like being political here. We're just being. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. was. Yes. Yeah. No, I got The you. idea was to come up with something, a, a slogan or a it, catchphrase. It, it was. It was. That yeah. Agreed. We, we will get there. And, well, they, and we changed our survey to make sure that we could, you know, we would take suggestions from folks saying, okay, we, what would you say or what would you prefer? And I. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that needs more work. I think. <laughs> yes. If you're going to have. <laughs> a little more. If you're going to have that kind of a thing mm -hmm. on the sign, you know. First of all, I think Tom Minnie should decide on what it is. Oh, good point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. I mean, again, they just seem to vote on whatever we do. And, and option will be to not. <laughs> yeah, we can do it uh, along with the gazebo. Uh, oh, jeez, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and of, course, yeah, of course, one option Careful, is. Careful, Bob. Oh, the gazebo. Have still, still going. <laughs> is it a gazebo or a gazebo? Yes. Well, one option is not to have a slogan on the side. Mm. Yeah, that's that's also that's that's an option as well. Yeah, if, if you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the idea was yeah, that the red, the good. sign, you know, <laughs> be in in pictures, images, or words, would sort of yes say something. Dis what's distinctive about graphic? Yeah, it'd be it'd be easier if we just had like a survey that had just all these little pictures, like a picture of a bathing suit and a picture of a softball, a picture, <laughs> and you could vote what you didn't, what doesn't match, and then you'd end up with something. Yes. I don't in, think anyway, people are able to come up with this on their own. Yeah. No. it is it is definitely they had a two leaves on one of them. I was like. We're not Vermont. Yeah. It no, it's, weird. it's, yeah, it's definitely been, <laughs> anyway. yeah, interesting. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll so see what right, comes out of it. It's 9.30, I'll shut up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, with, with that, you know, uh, I will also shut up now because I feel like I covered most of my, most of everything, but I do, I just want to reiterate if there are specific questions um, about anything that's going on that I didn't mention. Um, okay. Anything, anything anybody wants to ask of staff at this point? Um, if not, we'll move on to reports from planning board representatives on town committees and CMRPC, if, if any. Anybody have anything to offer? Not I. The only thing I'll add is the Community Preservation Committee is currently accepting applications for projects to bring to fall town meeting. So if anyone has any ideas for a project that falls within the tenets of the CPA for you can certainly submit for that you can contact our chair or try the best like John Stevens would be able to help for any comment about that or me directly I can help direct you and I guess can I ask a quick question about uh, what was the outcome on Thursday regarding a7 Milford if anything, the the Graft, I know the Grafton Railroad is looking at the property as well. But we this yes. board wrote a letter of support, so I was just curious. If... 
Yeah, I'll say I have not watched that meeting yet. I was not able to attend Thursday. Oh, okay, all so right. I, no I don't, I don't know for sure, but I, I intend to watch it. I, I got a high level from someone that's not on the committee that basically said it seems like it's messy and not solved yet. But I'm gonna watch the meeting and get firsthand knowledge. Okay, yeah, no, no, didn't mean to, yeah, put you on the spot or anything. I also didn't watch it, Justin, so no, <laughs> I could have done that myself. Um, okay, thank you. Any other re reports from Planning Board representatives and town committees and CMRPC? If not, any other items which may lawfully come before the board? We don't need to vote to extend the meeting duration past 10 o'clock unless somebody really wants to hang out here for a while longer. I move we adjourn. Okay, I second it. <laughs> Moved and seconded that we adjourn. Justin. Aye. Prabhu. Aye. Andrea. Aye. Bob. Aye. And they vote side. Motion carried unanimously. We are adjourned. <laughs>